Y'all yeah. remember this song I did called No Worries Early? Yeah. Oh, look, I said, I told them brothers that his stand is too high. I ain't settled, but they wonder how I plan on getting by. I just tell them I ain't got no worries. Don't worry about the thing. That's right. <laughs> now, look. When I'm talking about that song, when I'm just talking about the life in general, I ain't got no worries, nothing ever goes wrong. Is that what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, I tell people that God's standard is really, really high, because God is really, really holy. And I try to impress on people, look, same stuff Prap was saying. The little, your good deeds, they're not good enough, because God's standard is really high. We've sinned against this God. And this God is holy, I mean, Holy, set apart, every day. So holy, if you if you go look back at his character for the last thousand years, you'll find nothing but holy. If you go look at his character in eternity past for the past hundred million years, you will find nothing but perfect, pure, uncorrupted, righteous, holy. God is holy. He's holy. He's holy. We are holy and we think old church name. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about perfect. Holiness. The most holy person you know falls ridiculously short of the glory of God. Yeah. Name of Billy Grant falls short of the glory of God. Martin Luther King falls short of the glory of God. Mama falls short of the glory of God. What's what I said that thing? That's true. That's you mama said it, you saw it. That's that stuff. Hey, man. Hold on, hold on. But the truth is, we fall short of God's glory. Oh. So when I tell people that, they say, okay, well, I'm confused. How can you say you have no worries? What I'm talking about, there's not no worries in this life. I'm talking about no worries in the next life. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, when I stand before this holy God, I'm confident that he's not going to say, get away from me. I never knew you. I'm confident I'm not going to be punished forever. So we can say, well, hold on. You said the standard is really high. You admitted that you don't meet that standard. But you're confident that even when you stand before this guy with a high standard, that he's going to reward you. Yeah. Help me understand that. Jesus. Let me, let, let me help you understand that. Dudes will say, you know what, that's because that's you think you're perfect. You think you don't have no issues. You know, I, I know I'm not perfect. I know I have sins. I know I have sins that need to be paid for. I know I got issues. And if I forget, my wife will be sure to remember. <laughs> She's very worried. I know I got issues. I know I have sins. Let me tell you what a Christian is. A Christian is not somebody who doesn't sin. A Christian is not somebody who thinks they've never sinned before. A Christian is someone whose sin has been paid for. Thank you, Lord. So I am confident. Let me tell you why I'm confident. When the time was right, God sent his son, Jesus Christ. And when the Lord Jesus came to this earth, he dealt with all the same mess we do. Whatever kind of mess you're dealing with in your life that makes you think, that's why I am who I am. Understand, the Lord Jesus dealt with the same kind of mess. So I never like to minimize any of the stuff that we go through. But I always want to encourage us, don't use that as an excuse for how we always respond. Jesus went through all kinds of mess. He lived on our earth. Perfect. No sin. Never disobeyed his parents. Never got sinfully angry at anybody. Never ever looked upon a woman with lust. Brothers in this building know. You go 33 years and you don't look upon any woman with lust ever, you are a special dude. You know, you know why that's funny? Because it seems absurd that anybody can live every single moment without ever a sinful thought, a sinful action, a sinful intent. But there is someone who did it. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. And even though Jesus lived that perfect life, when he was 33 years old, they nailed him to a cross. Let me tell you, when they nailed him to that cross, God was not surprised. It was when they nailed him to that cross. So it grieved God that they would sin against his son in that way. God knew this is the way I plan to pay for their sins. Because when Jesus was on that cross, he wasn't just taking pain. He wasn't just taking normal kind of pain of death. He was taking the sins of sinners all around the world.
you can still die. Like, people don't like that. They say, now, how is it that your hero died? So, well, it's not the end of the story. <laughs> Whoever you think your hero is, holler me in about 20, 50 years when he dies, and let me know if he gets up. If he gets up, let me know. I'm going to meet that dude. Okay? We're talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. He raises his hand. When he comes out, he defeats his enemies. He defeats our enemies forward. You cannot beat sin. Jesus did that. You cannot beat the devil. Jesus did that. You cannot beat death. Jesus did that for you. Jesus did that for you. So let me, let me tell you why I have absolutely no worries when I stand before God. It has nothing to do with me and everything to do with what he did for Amen. One day I heard that good news about Jesus. And God did a work in my heart where I said, I want to be done with this sin that God has. I'm going to trust in the one who paid for those sins that God hates. I want to cling to the one who did everything for me I can't do for myself. That's the kind of Lord I want to follow. The kind of Lord that gets up from the grave. The kind of Lord that defeats all my enemies. And the kind of Lord that's coming back. So if you're in this room tonight, we say, you're in this room tonight, and you still worry about what's going to happen in that next life. I want you to know you can have no worries. You can be confident. Just don't look to yourself. Look to right. Him. Yeah. All right.